Hello and welcome to Lazy DIY. I'm Tanya and I have three coastal DIYs for you today. But first I'd like to mention that this video is part of Heidi Sonberg's DIY Coastal Challenge. I have included a link to her channel below in the description box as well as a link to the playlist so that you can see all the other very, very talented ladies that participated in this challenge. I'm starting with these block signs from Dollar Tree and we're actually gonna need three of them. I'm peeling everything off of the front. It comes off really easy and there'll be this little bit of white left. We're gonna leave that and paint over it. I used these two colors that I got at Target. One is called Robin's Egg and one is called Mermaid, but any coastal colors will do. I'm sanding around the edges to give it a weathered look. And we've left that little bit of white material on the block because when we sand over it, it's going to show through. I repeated the same process on the other block using the mermaid color. I'm going to use my Dollar Tree stencil to write out my letters. I'll be using Waverly chalk paint in hazelnut. I get mine at Walmart and it's just over a dollar. Okay, so the trick to using paint with stencils is that you need to make sure that you have very little, and I mean very little paint on your brush. You wipe the majority of it off and then use a flat brush and do kind of a stipple motion and drag. You also wanna peel back the stencil when you're done. Don't try to lift it straight up. It will get paint everywhere. I'm writing the names of the two beaches that I grew up around just cause it's nostalgic, but you could write anything that you want. This third brick I've painted in chestnut, just like the letters. This wired burlap ribbon is from Dollar Tree. I'm going to make sure that the piece I cut is gonna cover the entire brick and then I'm going to cut it and pull the wire out. I hit it with a little hot glue just to hold it in place while I did the next piece. I'm measuring and cutting out a piece for the front. You'll notice that I left the top ribbon a little long and that's for two reasons. One, so that I can tuck it over the top of this little piece in the front when it's done to make it look nice and finished. And the second reason is because I put glue on the sides and then use that leftover part to pull it down over the top of the glue so that I don't burn my fingers. To finish this piece up, I added another piece of ribbon to cover up the back and then I trimmed off all the excess. I'm just adding hot glue to the bottom of my blocks here and placing them on the bottom stand. I decided to place mine at kind of a diagonal. That's gonna leave me room to add shells in the front because as you can see, there's this little blotch in the front where I got overzealous and put down my ribbon before my paint was dry. But that's okay, it's gonna be really cute with shells on the front. It's a happy accident as Bob Ross would say. These shells are from Dollar Tree also. This one is painted gold because it's from another project and that video will be coming out very soon but not part of my regular schedule. So if you'd like to see that one, you can hit subscribe and the notification bell so that you don't miss it. For my second project, I have to start by getting rid of glitter. Dollar Tree does have other shadow boxes, but I really liked the frame on this one and it was the perfect size. So I'm gonna weather the storm here. I used a box cutter to pop off the back. Then I dumped out the excess glitter and sprayed the inside with some Windex and wiped it down as well as I could. This is just regular color sand from the Dollar Tree. They have different colors, so you can pick a color that matches the decor of your house. I'm peeling the paper off of the backing and I'm going to paint it a seafoam green color. I'm using a light color and doing only one coat so that it gives it kind of a weathered look. Once it's completely dry, I'm going to put it back on and I'm going to use my hot glue to do that. I'm using a really good amount of hot glue because I want to make sure I get a really good seal here. I don't want sand leaking out. Once I put the backing on again, I'm going to do the other side as well to make sure it's nice and secure and I don't have any leaks. 
because there were some staples left over that I had to push down, so I'm not gonna get a perfectly tight seal in the back. I'm using rub-on transfer letters from Dollar Tree, and when you use these, you have to cut them out first, otherwise you will have the entire sheet of letters all over your project, and I did find that out the hard way. If you clean your glass off with a little Windex before you use these, they go on so easy, but you have to be very precise when you set them down because that's where they are staying. I rubbed them with the back of my paintbrush just because it seemed like it would be nice and gentle. How cute and understated is this? I think it would be perfect tucked into a bookcase somewhere. I'm using this Dollar Tree 3D wreath form for my third project and I've spray painted it white. These napkins are also from Dollar Tree and I thought they were the perfect coastal colors. Only a third of these napkins is printed so I'm gonna cut off the outer edges and keep just the pattern part. These napkins are actually two ply and in order to separate them just grab the bottom and rip it. You want a really jagged rip so that you can find a place where they separate so that it's easy to pull them apart. I'm using Mod Podge to paint the inside of the shells that I got from Dollar Tree. They just come in a big bag. I'm just gonna press the tissue paper print side up inside of the shell. I used the large 3D form for this project and it took about four or five bags of shells. If you used the smaller 3D form, probably about three bags of shells. This isn't difficult, it doesn't take any skill at all, but it does take some time, so you probably wanna watch a Netflix movie or something while you do it. I cut most of the excess off with a pair of scissors, but then I used a piece of sandpaper along the outer rim so that I could get nice clean edges. My camera didn't record the first part of me putting on the shells, and I am so sorry about that, but you just start at the top doing this, and it's exactly the same. You're gonna put hot glue on both sides, and you're gonna hold them together on the wire for a few seconds just to let them set up. I'm gonna speed this up for you because it's the exact same thing over and over and over from top to bottom of each wire. Now that I have the entire frame covered in shells, I'm gonna finish off the bottom with a little tassel of sorts. I'm using this fishnet from Dollar Tree. I just wanted to show you it comes in another color, it comes in green, but I'm gonna be using the off-white. Instead of unfolding it, I'm gonna keep it bunched together kind of like ribbon. It sort of almost looks like really thin macrame when you keep it bunched like this, and I think it is just so cute and makes the easiest little tassel. I'm feeding two separate pieces through the bottom. It's gonna go between the bars, wrap around, and come back through. And the second piece will be opposite so that it makes an X. Then I gathered all of my netting together and used a piece of cotton string to tie a knot. cut my little tassel to the length that I wanted it and I added some more cotton string to the top so that I could hang it up. I just wrapped the cotton string four or five times so that I had a nice strong loop because this thing does have some weight to it. I hung my seashell sphere out on my front porch and I just am in love with these colors. I love the blue and the green with the natural coral pinkish color of the shells. 
the shape of the shells act kind of like sails, so the whole sphere spins when a breeze picks up. I cannot wait for a cool summer night to set a no flame candle in the middle and sit out on my porch with a cool drink. I hope you've enjoyed these DIYs and if you have, hit subscribe to see the new coastal beach decor videos that I have coming up. I have at least one new video for you every week, but I also have surprise videos often so you're going to want to ring that little bell so that you don't miss those. Thank you so much for joining me here on Lazy DIY. I'm Tanya and I will see you soon.